Welcome. In this video, we will begin discussing the WKB or also WKBJ approximation, which is also called the semi-classical approximation. Now, WKB stands for Wenzel, Kramers and Bruyne, and the J that is sometimes added, I believe, stands for Jeffries, which is another scientist that was also working on um, this approximation at the time. So this approximation is now a new way to approach what we have been dealing with previously. So basically, um, before, for example, we had perturbation theory, where we were assuming that the perturbation, our h prime, um, was very, very small, right? It, it was a very, very small approximation. And we also saw the variational principle, um, right? Where we kind of guessed uh, the state that we were dealing with. But now in the WKB approximation, what we now want to do is find the solution to problems without having to solve the Schrodinger equation. And that is something that is very special. So no need to solve the Schrodinger equation, to solve Schrodinger equation. That is uh, that's something that's very special from, uh, about this approximation. So basically, instead of solving the Schrodinger equation, we'll simply have to solve one integral. That is what most problems will be reduced to. And that is why this approximation can be very, very powerful. However, um, this is limited to cases where our potentials are relatively constant. Now, we'll see what exactly we mean by that. But basically, right, since we're dealing with particles that have a given wavelength, what we care about is that the potential doesn't change too much within the wavelength of our particle. As long as that is true, then we can rest assured and use the WKB or semi-classical approximation. Now, there are going to be two important cases that we need to discuss. So if we have, for example, some region where we have a potential, now this potential can be anything and it is relatively constant, right? So it, it does indeed fall in this category. So in that region, if we have that the energy is greater than the potential, we'll have a traveling wave. We already know what that looks like. It's going to be some constant times e to the plus or minus i k x, right? We'll have one traveling to the left, one traveling to the right. And here, of course, the energy will be, or basically the energy will, give it, will be given by k, which is the square root of 2m e minus the potential. We already know that, that is nothing new. And in another case, right, this will be another case of interest that we'll get to in the next couple of videos. If we have that the energy is less than the potential, then we will have that our wave function will be exponentially decreasing. Right, so that is the idea. And of course, in this case, k will be 2m v minus e, right, the other way around. So these are the two cases, and the WKB approximation will treat these two slightly different. However, in both of these cases, basically whenever we are dealing when the energy is greater, when the energy is smaller, it will be relatively simple, and that will not be much of, a, of an issue. However, when we get to the point where the energy is comparable right, to the potential, but whenever they are, they, basically when we transition from one region to the other, we have to go through the point where the energy is basically the same as the potential. And there our analysis will require um, quite a bit more complexity and that will be difficult, but mainly in the derivation. Once we get the results, and that is going to be true for the entirety of the WKB work that you will do, once we get our formulas, right, because we will get a few formulas that give us the wave functions or the energy, um, we will be able to incredibly easily find what we want. And what is it that we want? So the WKB approximation, of course, has its limitations, just as we had seen before. Now, what is this good for? This is very good at finding two things. The energy levels of bound state, so of bound states and also the transmission coefficients. So those are the two main things 
that we will want to find using this approximation. So this is just a very quick overview of what the WKB approximation um, is, right? At least what its objective is. Of course, we haven't really gone into details of how to work with it, but in the next video, we will already begin working with the first case where the energy is greater than the potential. So I hope this video was useful to you. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.